Okay, here's a presentation on American trypanosomiasis. American trypanosomiasis is also known as Chagas disease. So trypanosomiasis is caused by the infectious agent Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi is a protozoan. It occurs in a humans and 150 other species of domestic and wild animals. It can get into dogs, cats, rats, mice, and all sorts of animals. It's endemic to uh, South Central America and Mexico, and we're either starting to see it in the southern states like Southern California, Texas, Alabama, and Florida. This is a vector borne disease, all right, and it's transmitted by the bug that goes by the common name of the kissing bug or the cone nose bug. The kissing bug belongs to the family of Reduvidae, Redu excuse me, Reduvidae, uh, and is in the genus of triatoma, all right? So family name Redividae and the genus name triatoma. These uh, bugs are blood sucking and nocturnal, right? And they like to live in the cracks and holes that they can find in housing, especially in mud huts uh, that you can find in Central and South America. So infection, how, how do we get infected by this bug? How does it get us sick? Well, it's gonna, it's going to excrete that uh, trypanosoma cruzi, that protozoa, in its feces. So infection occurs when a freshly excreted feces contaminate things like our conjunctiva, right, in our eyes, our mucous membranes, like our lips and our mouths, or any openings in the skin, abrasions, skin wounds, or even the bites they themselves cause. So when these things go to have their nocturnal blood mill and they're, and they're get, you know, sucking your blood, well, they're going to excrete their feces in that bite they cause, and that is one way they can infect you with that protozoa called uh, trypanosomy cruzi. Transmission can also occur from a tainted blood uh, transfusion as well. So somebody who has this disease chronically uh, donates blood to the blood bank, and now that, that, now that blood supply can, get somebody, can give somebody this infection. Talk about the incubation period and the period of communicability. So incubation period is going to depend on whether or not you were bitten. If you were bitten, it usually takes about 5 to 14 days. Uh, or if you had a blood transfusion, well, that'll take a little bit longer. The incubation period on a blood transfusion is 30 to 40 days. Uh, the period of communicability, well, we want to know uh, how long after the bug bites the infected host does it take for it can now go on to infect somebody. Well, that's usually 10 to 30 days. So 10 to 30 days after this, uh, this um, kissing bug has bitten somebody, it can then go on to infect somebody else when it goes to bite and then excrete the, excrete the trypanosoma cruzi protozoa and its feces. And this thing remains infectious for its life, and the average lifespan on these guys is approximately two years. So symptoms. We're going to talk about symptoms uh, in the acute phase and then what's called the chronic phase. So acutely, we might get what's called a chagoma, and a chagoma is characterized by inflammation at the site of infection. Right, so right here we got a picture of an erythema, right? Some inflammation, some redness, right at the site where this person was bitten. And we got to understand that chacoma, this can last for upwards to eight weeks. Eight weeks this patient can have these symptoms for. We might also get what's called um, uh, Romana sign. And Romana sign is characterized by unilateral bi papebral edema, right? So unilateral one side, right? One eye. Well, bipapebral means, you know, when we say papebral, papebral excuse me, uh, we're talking about the eyelid. So we throw the bi, well, that means upper and lower eyelid edema, all right? Unilateral bipapebral edema, that's what Ramona, Ramana sign is. Um, we can also get what's, you know, variable fevers, uh, these guys will also have malaise, you know, feeling run down, tired. Um, they're going to get lymphadenopathy, big swollen infected lymph nodes. Uh, we're also going to see hepatosplenomegalia, right? Megalia meaning large, so enlarged liver, enlarged spleen. Um, we're going to see possibly myocarditis, inflammation. Okay, so every once in a while we can get inflammation of the myocardium, of the heart. And then we can also get meningoencephalitis, inflammation of the brain, right? The meninges in the brain. So uh, meningoencephalitis and myocarditis, we got to understand that these are life-threatening manifestations of this disease. So Chagas disease 
can be life-threatening if we get myocarditis and meningoencephalitis. Um, all right, so now we're talking about the chronic phase. Well, chronically, Chagas disease can cause irreversible sequela. So whenever you see sequela, that's a complication of a disease or an illness, right? A long-term consequence. So some of the long-term consequences of uh, getting Chagas disease is well we get myocardial damage we get actual damage to the heart muscle as a result of myocardial damage we're going to see things like arrhythmias right and we can also get um problems with our digestive system we can get what's called a megacolon or a mega esophagus and this is dilation of the colon or the esophagus and this could be a problem because this dilation can will affect our digestion um it'll be so uh they'll be so dilated that peristalsis will be impeded, meaning we won't be able to move food down that digestive tract. All right, so then we talk about how we diagnose this thing. Well, diagnosis is done easier in the acute phase, and the reason being when, when our patients are in that acute symptoms, when they're febrile, well, that's when we have the, the highest concentration of parasitemia, right? So parasitemia refers to the amount of parasite that's actually in the blood. All right, so that, I mean, that makes sense, right? Uh, parasitemia, the time of being uh, highly concentrated would be the easiest time to di diagnose it because then we can do things like uh, blood culture. Um, another way that this is diagnosed is by what's called xenodiagnosis. And what xenodiagnosis is, is when you, we have the presumed infected patient, right? We assume this guy has Chagas disease. Well, we're going to take the kissing bug, right? We're going to take that triatoma bug and we're going to go ahead, right? Of course, it's got to be a bug that doesn't have uh, trypanosoma cruzi, but we're going to go ahead and feed that bug to that patient, to that presumed infected patient. And then what we'll do is we'll go and test that bug later and see if that bug actually now has trypanosoma cruzi, if it is now infected with that protozoa. And that would be, you know, positive test. And that's xenodiagnosis. All right, prevention. All right, so prevention. Uh, focus on breaking like your chain of infection, right? Focus on uh, limiting our exposure to these kissing bugs. So uh, going to be education involved in that. There's going to be insecticidal spraying, trying to, you know, kill the vector that's causing this. We're going to have uh, construction and repair of living areas. Make sure we limit the habitat that these kissing bugs can live in. Um, bed netting, right? Limiting their, their access, right? To getting that nocturnal blood mill, to uh, excreting those feces and infecting people with that trypanosoma cruzi uh, protozoa. All right. And then screening blood donors, making sure that our blood banks, that our blood supplies stay clear of this infectious agent. All right. All right let's do a little review of what we learned. So what is another name for the disease American trypanosomiasis? Another name for American trypanosomiasis. Well, what is it commonly referred to, right? Chagas disease. What is the infectious agent that causes Chagas disease? What, what do we call that agent that causes Chagas disease? Well, that's trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi, remember, protozoa that causes Chagas disease. What is the common name of the trypanosoma cruzi vector? What is the common name of the bug that carries, that infects us with trypanosoma cruzi? Well, that's the kissing bug or the cone nose bug. It comes from the family Reduvidae and comes from the genus Triatoma. How are people commonly infected with Chagas disease? How do they get this? And we know that's usually from feces, right? Feces entering, feces from that bug, from that kissing bug, entering a bite wound, a mucous membrane, or the conjunctiva of our eye. What is the incubation period of trypanosoma cruzi when transmitted by the bite of an infected vector, right? So when one of these infected bugs bites us, what's that incubation period? five to 14 days, five to 14 days is that incubation period for a bite. What is the incubation period of trypanosoma cruzi when transmitted by blood transfusion? Blood transfusion, remember, a little bit longer, 10 to 30 days when we get it by a blood transfusion. 
What acute phase finding is characterized by inflammation around the bite site, inflammation around the bite site. Oh, we call that a chagoma. A chagoma, how long can that last? How long can that last? It can last upwards to eight weeks. What acute phase finding is characterized by unilateral bipapebral edema? Remember, one side, bipapebral, upper and lower eyelid edema. Romana sign, Romana sign. What are two life-threatening conditions that can occur in the acute phase of Chagas disease? Two life-threatening conditions. Well, we can get myocarditis, inflammation around the heart, and we can get meningoencephalitis, inflammation of the brain, right, and the lining of the brain. And the last review question. What term describes a process of testing for an infectious agent by allowing a vector to feed on a host that is presumed to be infected and then testing the vector for the suspected infectious agent, right? So we take the, the patient we suspect is infected, we take the bug, we feed the bug to, to the patient, or not feed the bug, feed the bug the patient, feed the patient to the bug, there we go, and then, uh, and then test the bug later on to see if it contracts the disease, what well, we call that xenodiagnosis, xenodiagnosis. All right, this concludes the presentation. Uh, I pulled these resources, of course, from the Control of Communicable Disease Manual, and I also pulled a little bit of information from the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. I hope that was a help. Have a good day.